Hey everyone, in this video I'm doing another digital drawing and for this one my main focus was to practice drawing male characters digitally because I haven't really done that a lot because my go-to is female characters so I really want to work on my male style more. So that's what this drawing was and I didn't want to just do like a like a portrait, I wanted to have some kind of scene sort of thing. So I decided to include a bird in the picture because I do like painting birds. Their feathers are so fun to paint and shade and you can just basically make them whatever color you want <laughs> and call it like fantasy. So I enjoyed doing that and I definitely used a reference for the bird just because I couldn't quite figure out what, what body shape because I wanted it to be kind of a larger bird but not like huge. So I kind of base it off of a crow, like the shape of a crow's body, and I made minor changes here or there, depending on the way I wanted it to look. And I just needed to see how that second wing looked when it was like, like, like not the one in the foreground, but the one behind that, the one that's kind of going off into the distance. I needed to know what that wing looked like, so I used reference for that. And I just looked at my own hands to see um, how his hand would be, because it's almost as if he's like, holding out his hand for the bird to land on. That's kind of the idea of this. It took me a long time to get the pose right because I didn't know if I wanted him to be facing away from the bird, like kind of like saying, come on, and the bird's jumping onto his hand and they're gonna like walk away or if he's facing the bird with his hand. So I kept going back and forth between the two and I didn't know which one I wanted to do. But ultimately I decided on the one where he's facing the bird because I think it just works better for the composition because both of the subjects are facing towards each other and it kind of frames the whole picture a little bit nicer than if he was facing away like the same direction as the bird. I just decided that worked a little bit better and that way I didn't have to like awkwardly fit his other hand in the picture because I think it'd be more natural for it to not be shown in this angle. And I played a lot with the lighting. I kind of wanted the light to sort of be coming from the bird or from where the bird is flying from. That's kind of the idea. And it's like a golden kind of light, but I didn't make it as, as exaggerated as I initially wanted it to be. It's a little bit more of a soft light in the end. And I think, I don't know which I would have preferred more, but I do like the way the lighting turned out in the end. And it took me a really, really long time to get the facial the facial features right just his eyes and everything I always make the eyes too big um, on male characters because it always looks better when their eyes are smaller than on a female character because females tend to have like larger eyes in my style so whenever it, as soon as I made his eyes smaller it looked a little bit more natural and it took me a long time to get the mouth shape and the eye shape so it might look a little bit weird at first but I, I think I fixed it in the end, but just right now it looks a little bit strange. I'm just in the process of applying the lighting. Yeah, I think I made the eyes smaller now. And I couldn't decide which direction I wanted the light to be coming from, because at first it was going to be coming from kind of like below, but then if it's coming from the bird, then it would light up its whole face, so I just decided to make it coming from the direction that the bird is flying. And the part that took me a really long time was the hair. I just kept on, it didn't like take me a, like a long time, like a lot, like a large amount of time to do the hair, but it, it just took longer than I wanted it to, to take because I kept having to zoom in and it was just really messy and it was just, the hair just seemed really, really tedious just because, you know, he has short hair. So there's so many different strands that you have to draw in to make it look realistic. And I kept trying to make sure that the light was evenly distributed across his hair. So I did have fun with the hair though. I included some bluish shadows in there. I don't know how well you can see it though, but I did include like more of like a blue kind of shadow, just a pull from the blue in the bird. It was fun to shade the hair, but just, just tedious. And I wanted to make sure that the shadows, like with the hair strands that fall down, that the shadows on his forehead looked realistic, but I don't know how well I pulled that off and I kind of struggled with shading like the bridge of his nose because I wanted to make it dark but not too dark because I feel like after I shade like his neck and like the shirt and the bird and his hair and everything that the face doesn't seem to have enough shading on it so I tried to add darker shading without it being more like too 
overwhelming, but I did have fun shading the face. So like once I had the face all laid out the way I wanted it to be, then it was a lot more fun to shade it. But it did take me a while before I got the shape of the mouth the way I wanted it to be. That's the only thing that I struggled a lot with was the mouth and just like the initial pose. But um, once I decided on this pose, then then I was good from there. And it took me a long time to shade the sweater. And I'm not sure why. I just couldn't decide how much detail I wanted there to be. I kept going between like simple to more like realistic kind of coloring. And I couldn't decide like how many shadows, like how dark would it get. And I did have fun shading the hand. For, for some reason, the hand um, was pretty fun to shade. I usually struggle a lot with hands, but I think since I looked at my own hand to see what it looked like for reference, then it helped a lot with that. Another thing that I wanted to talk about that I'm probably going to talk about in an upcoming video, but I'm going to address it now. So the program I use to draw with is called Paint Tool Sci. I'm never sure if I'm saying that correctly, but it's called Paint Tool Sci. And for a few years, um, the company that makes this program has been working on a second version. So this program is fairly lightweight, so it's really good for painting though, it's a really good quality program. I think I got it for around $50 Canadian dollars, but um, that was before the Canadian dollar was a lot weaker than the state's dollar. But anyway, so the program doesn't have um, shapes, doesn't have any shape tools, doesn't have any ruler tools, um, it doesn't have any text tools, there's no gradients, and uh, I can't remember if there's anything else that it's missing. Oh yeah, like, there's like certain filters and certain like blurs that it doesn't have. But um, for a while the company has been working on a second version and it has been in beta for a long time. But now they released like a like a more more finished version, but it's not completely finished. They tell you that it's not totally stable because it's missing a few features. But um, I did use it for the last part of this drawing and oh my gosh, it's so much better than like the first version, it's it's just like Paint Tool Sci 2, that's what they call it, and if you already have the first one purchased, you can just get the second one. It's like a free upgrade, I believe, you can use the same license key as your first one. And it has like perspective rulers, perspective grids, like round rulers, there's straight rulers, there's like gradients and text tools and like blur filters and a lot more options for like luminosity, shade, there's like what do you call it, burn and dodge, and they have, like, they added a whole bunch of stuff, and it's so nice to use now, there's so many cool features, like, when, when you want to view a different, like, see how in this speed paint, I have two windows open of the same drawing, you can open up a floating window, so it can overlap everything, there's just a lot of really cool things, and I can't wait till it's totally finished, because there are a couple things that it doesn't have, like, with the, with the magnifying glass tool, there's no options for, like, when you tap, does it zoom in or out? And if you drag, can you like close in on, on a specific area? It's kind of missing those tools right now. I don't know if they're going to add them back, but that could be one of the things they mean when they say that it's not completely stable or finish. But I think I'm going to use it from now on until they um, come out with like the the final version of it because it's just so much better. There's so many like, like there's more options for when you, for your brushes and there's actually no blur tool, which is weird. I don't know if they're going to add a blur tool, but maybe one of the other tools can act as a blur tool with certain settings. I'm not sure about that. I found that kind of weird. I don't really use the blur tool, though. There's always the water tool, which can work just like the blur tool. So, yeah, this is when I switched over to the program. And as you can see, the, the bars are bigger um, because I guess it accounts for the resolution of your screen. It doesn't make it tiny. It makes it bigger because... The first paint tool side, like, it's so tiny whenever I use my uh, Cintiq. But with this one, they're full size, and it's just so much better to work with. I like it a lot more, so I'm going to be using it from now on, unless it gives me some kind of problem. You can also make a lot bigger canvases, too. So, yeah. Um, I added, like, the blur filter at the end, as you can see. So, thanks for watching this video. Um, I had a lot of fun shading and coloring everything in it. So... I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.